Uh, yeah, for years. Not recently. Yeah. Yeah. You? Nice. Not so much anymore. Yeah. I kind of had to give it up a few years ago. Creaky knees and all. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I did. I played street ball in L.A. for yeah. a, a good 10 years. Oh, yeah? And in New York. I mean, whenever I would play in New York. Actually, I became obsessed with basketball. I would, anywhere I went, if I had to go to Atlanta or Boston or wherever, I'd try to find a YMCA or a pickup game really? or something. Really? Yeah. But That's cool. Not so much anymore. Yeah. I try to hit NBA games if there's one going on when I'm traveling. Really? Yeah. Oh, you mean, but just go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, they, don't, they don't let me play Hang with them. Yeah. Hang on. Okay. All right. So congratulations. Thank on, you, on Adam. This, on this movie. How much, how much fun was it putting this together? This, was this like a, a dream job in lots of ways? Um, it was a dream job on many levels, uh, not the least of which is it was, you know, the opportunity to be in an Alexander Payne movie. Um, and then, of course, the Paul Giamatti factor. Mm -hmm. uh, when Alexander told me that Paul was going to be the other guy, I was just, I was thrilled. I mean, I've admired him for many, many years. And he's, you know, he's such, and then to meet him and you immediately get a sense that the defining word for him is generosity. It really is. I mean, he's a wonderful father. He's a wonderful husband. He's a, just a wonderful guy to mm -hmm. work opposite of. And is so, is such a, a resolute, complete team player. You know, he's, he absolutely, he is absolutely without hesitation. It's like, let's talk about this. Let's figure this out. You know, the, every, it doesn't matter what the scene is. We're, we're equally important in this. We're equally important in this movie. And, mm -hmm. you know, and he never, and he was that way with everybody. Yeah. I mean, I really learned a lot. Uh, and, you know, he just, he's a guy that exudes such humility. And it's, you know. Yeah. Well, talk about figuring out between the two of you that relationship to make that work so well. The way you guys can go at each other, and but also everyone knows that you know you guys are close. But how much work did it take to get to that level as actors? Um, you know, the antagonistic side of the relationship, I it w was more difficult for us because Paul and I became such fast friends, you know, and like laughing and just, you know, we had so much fun together, just telling stories and just amusing each other with our lives yeah. and. So I think the antagonistic stuff was a little bit more difficult to get to. Um, but, you know, once you have the respect and, you, you know, and it's, and it's mutual, then you can start, it's in the context of the character, you can start, you know, ta being a little bit more aggressive and taking uh, uh, liberties with, you know, criticism or what, you know. It's <laughs> like, you know, you're doing this when you should be doing this. And... You know, and that's what I'm saying. It's like once we established Paul and I, yeah. then we could really explore all of the, you know, the 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 the, the uh, kind of nefarious uh, nuances of Jack and Miles. Right, and the nefarious, yeah, the nefarious nuances of your character. How how much fun was that? Or getting to some of the dark places? How difficult was that? Just making all that work. Well, you know, the on the darker side of some of the scenes, you know, Paul's character is much heavier on his feet than Jack. You know, Jack is like, he's, he's dancing and having fun and looking for love, quote unquote. Um, Miles is, is, you know, Miles is dragging this giant elephantine husk to a finish line. <laughs> you know, it's just like, he's just trying to get through the day and then is, you know, woeful and lamenting the next day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's, you know, you come at it from opposite directions, you know, pessimism, optimism, you know, love, hate, you know, they're, they're both bringing such a, a, a versatility of interpretations of those moments that they confront in the story. You know, it's like, you know, Jack is a pretty upbeat guy. You know, he's excited about the week. He's excited about getting married. He's, but of course, absolutely stricken with fear about getting married. And he kind of has to confront that later on in the week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Talk about being able to reveal some things with this character and, you know, show a side of, of your acting abilities maybe a lot right. of people haven't seen. Is that exciting for you as an actor, knowing that people are going to you know, enjoy seeing you do this kind of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> People are going to love me, Adam. <laughs> um, 
No, I, you know, I, I don't know. It, that's a difficult thing to kind of project yeah. uh, on the audience. I, you know, I just, I think that the movie is wonderful and resonant and hopeful. And I think that Paul and Alexander, because I do consider him to be in the movie, he's an integral part of what we did. Um, you know, it's like we're all parent, you know, like, like we're the village that's parenting these characters mm. in this story. And, you know, while it started with Jim and Alexander and then, of course, is, is capably executed by, by Alexander, you know, it's like when you're there, everybody, it's like Virginia, Sandra, all of us, the, you know, the department heads, the crew, you know, everybody is that village. And not to get too, like, who is it that's, what is it? The fam, the village is really the family. Um, you know, it's, I, I just think that, you know, these guys, I don't know, I, I just think that it's such a, a confluence of, 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 of everyone contribute, you know, everyone's contribution. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, was that even an answer? You had, a, you had, you had, a, had did you, how did you relate to this guy? Was there certain aspects of him, obviously, that you found? You know what? There's probably crossover from Jack's life to one, you know, one million guys. Yeah. Um, hell, probably one million actors. Um, yeah, I mean, there's all, you know, it's like, he's a guy, he was an actor, you know, I'm a guy, I am an actor. You know, he's had failures, he's had disappointments, but he's also had achievements, and he's kind of managed to, to have a career, and he makes a living, and now he's kind of moving on to the next phase, which is marrying the, into this wealthy family. You know, maybe a loveless marriage, but he's just kind of resigned to moving on. And then in the course of the week, he meets Sandro's character, who's just this bursting ball of passion and energy and, and, and vitality. And, and it's just, he, he's kind of forced to redefine what he was resigned to. And, I, I, you know, I, he's a guy that, it's like the choice for him in life comes a little bit too late. You know, his, his, the monster that he has unleashed earlier in the week is, is, you know, is what kind of, it, you know, he's drawn and quartered by that monster. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just, I think that what's great and resonant about Miles' story at the end is that he's given a choice. He can continue to be this miserable recluse who is also this effete, you know, wine connoisseur, or he can choose life. He can choose to make a change and pursue somebody that, that might potentially be wonderful, mm -hmm. as opposed to hiding in fear, hiding in the, out of the fear that he may never find somebody wonderful again because of, his, of how much he loved his ex-wife. And Jack doesn't make that choice. You know, he has it dangled in front of him, but then it's taken away with great hostility, and he's left to his, you know, his, you know, kind of life of, of emotional mediocrity. Yeah. With humor. With humor. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about, we've talked to other actors, just about the joy of working up there in that part of the, yeah. that part of the state and having the wine around you. It's and beautiful. How unique of an experience was that for you? As an um... Actor? You know, I've always kind of referred in my, in my you know, professional life, uh, I always had a movie that I did a long time ago, Tombstone, was such a blast to do. Yeah. I mean, it was just every day it was fun and it was exciting and it's guns and horses and cowboys and, you know, and every night there was a party, you know. And Sideways so completely surpassed that experience because... It was so rewarding every day that it was a movie. And while I do love Tombstone and having been in it, that was like this big like Western with gunfights and horses and chases and stuff. And this is a movie that now at this point in my life, it, it, you know, it's about people that could really exist, do really exist. And it's so compelling to learn about them and to learn how they're vulnerable and, and how their fears may chase them down, uh, you know, a wormhole, and, 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 and how they may, they may find the, the courage and the spirit to recover from that, you know, to reemerge and to live life anew. And 
I just think that it's maybe it's because I'm a little bit older. It's just a wonderful story. And you go into every day making a movie like that, knowing that you're making something that has the potential to, to really to, to convey that warmth, to convey that spirit, you know, to, to something that people watch it and really have a satisfying, uh, entertaining, uh, you know, a couple of hours with you. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and that was part of it. That was part of being in the San Inez Valley, all those little towns, which I loved every one of them. I, yeah. They all have such, such unique kind of flaring character. And, you know, it's like Solvang and Lompoc and Los Olivos and San Inez and, you know, they're all, they're all so different and yet in that really beautiful Central Coast region. Yeah. It's an amazing backdrop. It really is yeah. for that mo for, for Sideways. Yeah. Thanks. Pleasure. Thank you. Good talking to you. Yeah, man. So first of all, since, yes. since we're here in Canada, <laughs> and because I'm not up here very often, I don't think, still think a lot of American audiences know that you're a big deal up here. You're, no. you're a huge deal here in Canada. Well, Correct? that's nice of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> as much as one can be a big deal in Canada. <laughs> what, what's it like for people that, the people that don't know, if you can just put into words what your career has been like up here. You don't have to, you don't have to like list awards, but in, okay. terms of, but in terms of like how you came to, to fame in, in Canada. How I came to <laughs> fame in Canada, if it's possible to be famous in Canada. <laughs> I started uh, early, uh, right after uh, graduating from the National Theatre School, and I did these two projects. One was called The Diary of Evelyn Lau for CBC, and the other had this film called Double Happiness, and they both came out around relatively the same time, almost 10 years ago, and uh, that kind of launched me into uh, the whole Canadian scene. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm a real um, example of, of a, a Canadian actor, which is someone who is not white, and who doesn't fit a lot of molds, uh, being able to um, play ourselves, to play Canadians, mm -hmm. as opposed to something relegated to uh, a specific ethnic part. So yeah. I think I, 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 it's nice to be able to represent a, a, a broad landscape of Canadians. Why are things like that up here, do you think, do you think easier for, for actors possibly to, to pull mm. that off? Whereas in the States... Are a couple of things. There actually, numerous things. I mean, Canada and the United States are completely different countries. Uh, the, the film industry here is completely different. Uh, indigenous film industry. Mm -hmm. One, there is no star system. The, you don't necessarily have to sell your movie on the back of on the back of someone's face um, uh, as, as much as you do in, um, in America. So that kind of corporate uh, responsibility or pressure... Uh, and also support is 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 not in Canada, so it's not necessarily. It's a little more of a meritocracy. It's a little more about what can this individual person give to a film, as opposed to how is this person going to help me sell the film. Mm -hmm. Way well, it should be, huh? It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. I, I mean, I, I I will admit, I I feel much more respected in uh, my country, um, and I get better roles. I get better mm -hmm. roles. That's why I, I always come back and do it for two cents, mm -hmm. um, because uh, I uh, they are better roles, and and I feel tremendously respected. But also, uh, I, you know, people call me every two, three, four years. It's hard to make a film in Canada. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But speaking of good roles, you've you've done some some nice ones in the states as well. Talk up, talk about this one. Just kind of the the joy of being part of this and how that came about for you. I'm sure that you'll meet everyone who's been a part of this film has been really, really happy to be a part of this film. Uh, I had such a great time. It was really kind of sinful. It was so easy. It was such a joy. Um, working with Alexander, uh, he's a wonderful director. Working the, with the cast, Michael London's a fantastic producer. It's just been like the easiest, most enjoyable job, and I really like playing Stephanie. You talk about her. Is it, it, everything about this movie is kind of free-spirited and fun and from your, from your <laughs> yeah. level. Is it just a kick to, to bring her to life and inhabit her from day to day? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I was really eager to learn how to ride a, ride a motorcycle and be the kind of person who rides a motorcycle and, uh, and also to, to play a role that, let's say, a lot of people would not consider, consider me on many levels, visually, whatever that means, or how, oh, she, it's not a typical part for her, whatever that means. Someone who's a single mom who's kind of irresponsible and a and a, a partier and a bit of a floozy. Yeah. Um, that was, it was really, really fun to play. And the whole wine world, how much of that were you privy to before this 
movie? How much of that did you mm. enjoy, or was this? We're, we're, I'm, we're big wine drinkers. Definitely, we we are big wine drinkers. And I know, uh, you know, Alexander picked this project and this novel because uh, the central themes, uh, one being wine. Um, but we've learned a lot about, particularly. Pinot yeah. in the Santa Barbara Santinez Valley. Yeah. yeah, we I know a lot more now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Working with uh, Thomas Hayden Church, talk about that experience. And he's and when you first met, I don't know, did you, have you met him before this movie or was this no, before? no, none what of us knew each other. None of you do. First time you met him, he's a big personality. What, what was that like? You are yourself in your own way, though. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> no one can be as big as Thomas. <laughs> no one. Um, Oh, it was nice. Uh, Alexander and I went to dinner with Thomas uh, after he got the part, and and he's just he is larger than life, and and a southern gentleman. He's he's a rancher, he's a rancher, and uh, I I he is in, intensely unique. His sense of humor and is intensely unique, and I think that's real. Uh, the most special part that he brings to the film mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is that uh, he's, he can be out of control and if you just shoot him, these great things are going to come out. Yeah. yeah. Talk about what you hope this film could mean for your career. You've had a great couple of years, but doing something like this, that, the Alexander Payne film that now gets certain attention just because of that, and you know it's so well written and so well directed and your performance is so good. Are you excited mm -hmm. about what this can bring? Well, you know this what? Fall? This has nothing to do with modesty. This is just, I think, a reality. I don't think that way anymore. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I, I, other people's career can be, um, can have those kind of building blocks. Uh, but m I've learned at, to this point that it's it's pointless to think that way. Yeah. I hope people enjoy the film and I, and, I, and I hope they enjoy everything about the film and have a good time. But I, I don't look at, I have stopped <laughs> trying to think that other things are going to help make other things happen. It's, it's kind of fruitless. Yeah, yeah. I just hope people enjoy it. What's your take on what this film has to say in terms of... Oh, a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it's uh, uh, as many people respond to, many people want, is uh, very intelligent adult films and adult comedies. Um, and this is a film about, you know, there's this beautiful scene where uh, Miles and Maya are starting to fall in love. And when they're talking about wine, when they're talking about themselves, and they're in the kitchen, and they're looking at um, a picture of my daughter, Sienna. And they're looking at each other just going, and uh, did you have kids? No, I didn't have kids. And they kind of talk about their divorces. And I thought, how nice to see these two characters, two adults, to a, to a divorce adults, which is a lot of people in the United States, and watching these people trying to fall in love again. I mean, I think that's going to speak to a tremendous amount of people. Mm -hmm. Watch this man come to terms with how he's been paralyzed um, and uh, uh, coming through a, a, a somewhat of a mini midlife crisis. I think a lot of people are going to relate to that. And because it's kind of set in a beautiful setting and it has the comfort of comedy around it, you're able to, I think, be m m pleasantly moved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the film. Yeah. How moved were you by the story when you first maybe read it on the page? You know, I wasn't too moved by it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Um, uh, it, it was... Um, it was really the crafting together of everything. That's what calls all yeah. the music, the sound. You know, when you when you see all the stuff edited together, um, then it, it's he really crafted it into. Um, and this is the I think this this is the skill, the beauty of Alexander's film. You think that you're watching something when really you're not. <laughs> you are watching this say uh, you're watching a comedy, but there is so much layered underneath that that at, at a certain point you realize, oh, that's me, or oh, I'm engaged in an emotional way, or, oh, my brain has been working really hard following it, and it's just been really, really great and challenging. Um, so, again, it's, it's become a, it's a very moving picture because of all the elements. Mm -hmm. Very good. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Pleasure talking to you. Yeah.